where you get judged by your wins and losses. Bruce in the middle. Brody, Bruce Beck, WNBC TV. You said in July the Mets should either trade DeGrom or give him a contract. Now that you are the Mets, how will you handle DeGrom's contract situation? Sure. Didn't expect that question today. Uh, <laughs> so, so Jacob DeGrom clearly has established himself as the best pitcher in baseball. Uh, hopefully in, in a couple of weeks he'll be awarded with, the, with that trophy. Uh, you know, as I said earlier, I, I think that uh, you want to try to identify the best players and you want to keep them for as long as possible. And if our vision and direction does not intend to include a long, sustainable winning team, then you have to consider moving players. But make no mistake, I believe Jacob deGrom is, is an incredible talent, and I hope to keep him for a long time. Wally on the left. Brody Wallace Matthews from uh, New York Daily News. Um, back on the DeGrom issue, did you discuss your, um, your possibility of coming over here with DeGrom and Syndergaard? And if so, what was their reaction to it? Yes, I did, and, and some of the other clients, clients as well. Uh, I think to a man, not only with their Mets clients, but, but also to clients around, around the game, there was a tremendous amount of enthusiasm, a tremendous amount of support, and, and I think a, a belief that I may be able to be, bring some fresh perspectives to the, to the team side. All right, and quick follow-up to that. Um, considering the nature of your relationship, especially with those two players, and the fact they haven't had their big free agent contracts yet, do you think you might have to recuse yourself when it comes time to negotiate those? Yeah, what, let, let me answer that, because I, I had conversations with the commissioner, commissioner's office, LRD, and Tony Clark directly, and we have provisions in Brody's contract to, to deal with any conflicts of interest. No, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't right now. Any others? Rich. Uh, Rich Patino, ESPN Radio. Um, trading deadline and winning meetings, you're going to be in a much different position than you were as an agent. You'll be making those calls and trying to get people to make trades and, and sign contracts. Being as though you were on the other end of it, does that give you an actual advantage in being in those times over general managers that weren't on the other side of it? Well, I wouldn't want to, uh, want to say I have an advantage over, over people that have more experience than I do, but, but I think I have insights. I think I understand uh, clearly what players' motivations are and what agents are trying to accomplish, um, and I certainly have insights into how all of the other teams operate. Um, I think what I've had the benefit of is I, I've helped tried to help a number of teams accomplish their goals, and I have a pretty good understanding of what they want to accomplish on a on a year-by-year -year basis as they're constructing their rosters. So I, I do think that I have uh, a unique perspective that I hope to bring to bring to the conversations. Tim in the middle. Tim from Newsday. Just curious what your understanding of ownership's degree of involvement is in baseball operations. Ownership in general or this ownership group? This ownership in this in your new situation. Well, as, as Jeff indicated before, I, I certainly hope that there is a collaborative approach. Um, every good organization that I've worked for has had a culture of collaboration. And that's one that I, that I value. Um, I mentioned that to both Fred and Jeff when we were going through this process that I want them to be involved. And, and the truth of the matter is if they're not, that's bad ownership. Good. James. James Wagner, New York Times. Uh, Brody, just the idea that you're on, you, for all those years, you're on that side of the negotiating table and um, you know, might have a you know, rivalry with, say, other agents and, say, other GMs in that way. But now that you're on this side, like, how will you manage those relationships and how will you guess, deal with them? Sure. Well, I think on a 10,000-foot level, I've always believed that players and teams need to form partnerships. And if they do, then you find a recipe for success. Um, I also know that agents have certain reputations, and maybe rightfully so. Uh, but the goal should be to put players in a position to succeed. Um, and I think if agents take that approach, you know, we as now, I say we, we as, a, as teams want to try to find the right fit, the right, uh, the right formula for success. And I think that uh, I think agents will embrace the fact that we may be an opportunity and a landing spot for great players. Dave on the left. Uh, Dave Lennon, Newsday. I guess this goes to both of you guys. Brody, you, you talked a lot, of, a lot of investments, you know, for this team, you know, whether it's players, whether it's scouting resources, whether it's analytical. For both you guys, does this signal kind of a new 
investment and a new kind of beefing up for the Mets with new front office personnel and, and a lot of new personnel to help in those departments, as well as investing in players, too? I'll, I'll, I'll let you answer on, on new or not, but uh, we certainly have money put aside. We heard it from all of the candidates uh, that they wanted to beef up certain areas and what they heard. Some of it was right and some of it was wrong from what the media has put out there. But uh, we do have money put aside to, to make sure we have uh, the resources there for investments in the front office and scouting development as well as uh, analytics. And they, and they made that clear to me through the process. Uh, not only are there resources, but I think there's real capabilities that exist in this organization already. And my goal is to bolster and build, around, build on top of it. Mike, also on the left. Mike Fitzpatrick, the Associated Press. Just questions for Jeff. Um, one of the things that's raised eyebrows about this hire was that there are front offices all over the major leagues with you know, seemingly very qualified, experienced people to come into a role like this. Why go, for you guys, why go in this direction, something so different? What, what, what about it has attracted you to it? Well, I, I think what Brody brought, and I'm not saying that anybody else lost, but uh, Brody uh, was the front runner for us because of what he talked about in terms of collaboration, his excitement, his feeling of what he could do with this organization where we are now and going forward. Uh, and we had, like I said, 40 some odd candidates that we talked about and went through and going through the entire process, uh, this was what we thought would be best for the organization going forward. I realized it's out of the box and I said we were gonna be out of the box to start. And this, this was truly where we thought we could put the hands of the organization uh, with Brody. Good. Gentlemen, thank you very much. At this time, we're going to break off into our one-on-ones, but prior to that, we're going to uh, stage a few photos on the front, so if you'll bear with us. Once the photos are complete, we're going to ask the TVs to come to the stage area. We're going to ask the print to go over to the other uh, backdrop you see over here to my right. Jeff will begin over at the print side. Brody will stay here on the stage. Uh, thank you all again very much for coming.